Good morning, happy Sunday. Welcome to New Garden Online. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Jeff. I'm the lead minister at New Garden and I'm so excited you're with us this morning online. If you are in the Hermitage area, I would love to invite you to connect with us in person on Sundays at 10 a.m. at DuPont Tyler Middle School. Now, I know there's some who are still uh, trying to figure out what the wisest thing to do and so you're staying at home and so we still wanna provide online content. But if you've never visit us, visited us in person, I would love to invite you to join us Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. at DuPont Tyler Middle School in Hermitage. Now, we are in week 33 in our year-long series through the Bible called Long Story Short. Last week, we finished up the book of Job, and this week and next week, we're going to dive into the book of Proverbs. Today is a special Sunday in person. It's a family Sunday which means all of our children, our older kids, will be in the auditorium with us. And so the lesson today is geared a little bit more towards the elementary school age. Uh, It's going to be a little bit different because in person we're going to have a lot of questions and answers and do some different things, but uh, I will try my best to relay the best content to you this morning and hope that you can walk away blessed by what God has to say to us about making wise choices. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Good morning and welcome to week 33 of our series, Long Story Short. Now, as you know, we are taking a year to journey through the entire Bible. We started in Genesis and we're making our way to Revelation. We are on the downhill slope, 33 out of 52. So we've got a lot more to cover and just a little bit of time to do it. So this week and next week, we're going to be in the book of Proverbs. Now, as I said in my intro, today is a special Sunday in person. It's a family Sunday. And so all of our kids are in the auditorium today, and we are trying to relay this truth of God's word to them on their level. Normally, they get to experience their own environment with a lot maybe more fun, more games, more activities. And uh, and so we're going to try and do some, some of that in person in the auditorium, which Unfortunately, you're going to miss out on, but I will try to do my best to bring the same kind of energy and excitement to you right now online. So if you were to come to our building on a Sunday morning and walk into the lobby, every Sunday we set up uh, and take down stuff. So we set up walls, we set up coffee stations, and we hang some stuff on the walls. And so if you pay attention in our lobby, you're going to see five different signs. Two of them go to our sprouts and what we teach them, and three of them go to our older kids and what we teach them. And this is what these three signs say. I need to make the wise choice. I can trust God no matter what. I should treat others the way I want to be treated. Now, every month we have a new series that the kids talk about, and every one of the series revolves around one of these three basic truths. Our goal is that when our kids leave our kids' ministry, they're equipped with these three basic truths in their lives. Think of them as like foundational bricks that they can stand on. The fact that they need to make the wise choice, that they can trust God no matter what, and that they need to treat others the way they want to be treated. If we can instill these three basic truths, we will have done our job. And so this month, we kicked off a brand new series called Dig Deep, Discover What Matters Most. And the key verse from this series is from James chapter 1. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So if you haven't figured out which basic truth we're talking about this month, it's the basic truth of I need to make the wise 
choice. Now, when we talk about making the wise choice or talk about wisdom, maybe the question is, is what is wisdom? You know, we throw it around a lot. And so as we teach the kids, this is how we're framing wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. So it's not just knowing what to do, but it's also applying what you should do to your life. Knowing and doing, thinking and acting. And so those, that's kind of what we're gonna talk about today as we go through it. Now, over the past couple weeks, week one, this is what we talked about in the kids' ministry. We said, wisdom is worth searching for. Week two, we said, trust God to give you wisdom. And then today, the whole idea is think before you act. I remember growing up as a child, I had this poster on my wall of a duck and the tagline was, think before you quack. In other words, you know, before you say something, think about what you are going to say and what kind of repercussions are going to happen because of that. And to this day, I can still see that duck poster and I try to control what I say. But it's not just what comes out of our mouths, but also how we act in life. The idea of we need to think before we act. And the proverb that we're gonna focus on today um, comes from the book of Proverbs, which most of them are attributed to King Solomon, who was uh, the wisest person who walked the earth in his time. People would come from afar to hear his wisdom. And he not only, I think, wrote down Proverbs, but probably accumulated just wise sayings, things things that say this is how the world works. They're not always promises. It's not always true. But more than likely, if you follow these truths, your life will be prosperous. Now, as we talked in the book of Job, it doesn't always work out that way. But more than likely, these are kind of proverbial truths. And so uh, one of those truths we find in the book of Proverbs says this, wise people see danger and go to a safe place, but foolish people keep going and suffer for it. So throughout the book of Proverbs, you're going to see the dichotomy of wise people and foolish people. Uh, you're, you're, and you have to make the choice. Which one are you going to be? And this king speaking to his son continues to pour out this admiration of don't be a fool. You know, choose wisdom. And this verse, it sets up the same choice of the here, here's a wise person and what they do. Here's a foolish person and what they do. The wise person, they see danger ahead and they go to a safe place. The fool, they continue to go on and they suffer for it. Now, a few weeks ago, Jenna and I, we got to go to a place called Cummins Falls, which is uh, now it's a state park in Tennessee. When I was growing up, it wasn't yet a state park, uh, but now it, there's a trail down to the water and you can hike down there. And we actually set up uh, n underneath the falls for a little bit, had a little bit of a snack, watched people play in the water. It's a beautiful place to go. I recommend going there. But as you're hiking into the falls, and even before you get to the falls, you have to watch this safety video as well, because they want you to know that the falls can be a dangerous place. In fact, they have signs that say this area is subject to flash flooding. And if it's rained, you know, the day before, or if it starts to rain, this calm, beautiful, serene uh, kind of waterfall and place to play can turn into just a raging torrent of water. And so you have to be on the lookout. Now, what they've done is if this were to happen, they've set up some safe spaces, these three places of refuge, these three safe places to go. And so if you're wise and you see danger, you hear the alarm or you see the rain, you start to see the water start to build, if you're wise, you go to a safe place, but a fool ignores the danger. A fool just continues playing in the water and you have to think, okay, well, what's gonna happen if you do that? Well, you could lose all your stuff. Ultimately, you could lose your life, you know, if you drown in the waters. And so a wise person sees the danger and goes to a safe place where a fool, they're gonna ignore it, they're gonna push on, and they're going to suffer the consequences. This is the whole idea of the verse, that wise people see danger and go to a safe place, but foolish people keep going and suffer for it. A friend of mine just had a similar experience. Her name is Julie, and she went to Peru and started to explore different places in Peru, and she sent me some pictures of her Peruvian adventure. So this is her uh, in front of the mouth of this cave, and she was going to go explore, but one thing she did not see, or 
one thing she just ignored was this sign that says, watch out for large boulders. And so as she made her way into the cave, what do you think happened? That's right, a bunch of boulders almost fell on her. She was not paying attention to the danger. Well, she continued, but this time she came to a path and it diverged, right? There were two paths that she could take. She wanted to make it to this waterfall and this sign on the left says waterfall this way, but it was long. This path on the right was really short. She could get there really quickly, but the sign said caution, poison ivy. Now, thankfully, Julie chose the wise path and she went the long way and she was able to see the waterfall without experiencing the harshness of having poison ivy. It kind of looks like Cummins Falls, right? Well, she learned from this experience and she went to some ruins, but this time she paid attention and she saw this sign that said, warning, falling snakes. So what do you think Julie did? She didn't go any further. She stopped and she thought, what's going to happen? A snake's going to follow me if I keep going. And so she stopped, she thought about it, and then she acted on this new knowledge. And that is the lesson she learned. And that's the lesson she wanted to share with me, that in her adventures, she learned these three basic things. We need to stop, we need to think, and then we need to act. A lot of times when we're faced with a decision, we make a quick decision and sometimes it is the wrong decision. But if we were able to just stop for just a second, take one breath, take one moment to give us enough time to think, what's gonna happen if I do the thing I want to do or say the thing I want to say. And then after you have a little bit of time to process, then you act on that decision. You're able to take a breath, stop, think, and then act. So as children, let's apply this to our lives. Imagine you are talking with your mom and your mom says something, and the first thing you wanna do is just say something back to your mom. Maybe it's not a kind word. What's gonna happen if you say that thing? Well, you might lose your phone, you might get grounded, you might you know, have to do extra chores, you might just make your mom mad, but what if you stopped and thought, okay, if I say this thing, what's gonna happen? If I don't say it, what's gonna happen? And you decide it, you should just say, yes ma'am, and move on. What if you are playing a video game and you're on the last level or you've been playing it for a long time and you really wanna finish it, but you know you have a test or an assignment at school tomorrow. If you continue playing the game, what could happen? Well, you could get a bad grade on that test or that assignment, but what if you stopped and thought, okay, I, I wanna play this game, but I also need to do this assignment for school. What if I set a five minute timer that way I can finish playing a little bit of the game, but I can also make sure and do the things I want to do. I stop, I think, and then I act. What if you are walking beside this awesome looking playground, but then you see this sign that says the playground is closed for repairs, but you really want to play on the playground. What's gonna happen if you jump over the fence and play on the playground? Well, you might end up getting hurt really badly. But what if you decide, okay, I would rather be safe than take a risk and you just keep on walking. You're gonna be happier for it. That's what it means when we say, I need to make the wise choice. We stop, we think, and then we act. Now, adults, for those of us watching, if we turn this statement into a question, the idea is, the truth is that I need to make the wise choice. So in the moment, we need to ask ourselves, what is the wise thing to do? Now, when I was in student ministry, I heard a, a series by Andy Stanley focusing on this question. Because again, as teenagers, we were trying to help them understand they need to make the wise choice. And this lesson, these questions that he asked have had such an impact on my life. I wanna share them with you today. So three ways that we can apply this question to our life. The first is this. When I think about my past experiences, what is the wise thing to do? Because wisdom isn't the same for everybody. We all have past experiences. We're all different people. What may be a good choice for you may not be a good choice for me. And so it's not necessarily what's the right thing to do or the wrong thing, what's the legal thing to do or the illegal thing. But based on my past experiences, based on the temptations that I struggle with, based on my strengths and my weaknesses, uh, based on my family history, what is the wise thing to do? So based on my past experiences, what is the wise thing to do? Then we say, 
based on the current circumstances. What is the wise thing to do? When I look at my current life, maybe I just got married and a friend calls and says, hey, do you want to you know, go up out of town for the weekend? When, when you were single, you just say, yes, that sounds great. But now your life is a little bit different. So based on my current experiences, based on my current circumstances, what is the wise thing to do? And then as we look forward, when I think about my future hopes and dreams, what is the wise thing to do? When I think about where I want to be in five years or in 10 years or where I want to be next week, what is the wise thing to do? Is it wise to give up a lifelong goal for a momentary pleasure or just a momentary decision? Um, you know, when we talk about saving for retirement, they always say, you know, if you do a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, it grows into more than just you know, trying to catch up at the very end. So based on my future hopes and dreams, when I think about the future, what's the wise thing to do today? So when you put them all together, you ask the question, when I think about my past experiences, my current circumstances, my future hopes and dreams, what is the wise thing to do? As kids, we can break that down to just a simple step. If we learn to do this, we will be so much better off in life that we need to stop think, and then act. And as we move into adulthood, we can start asking the question, okay, when I think about my past experiences, my current circumstances, and my future hopes and dreams, what is the wise thing to do? Because a wise person sees danger and goes to a safe place, but a fool continues to push forward and they're going to suffer for it. So we have to ask the question, are we going to be wise or are we going to be foolish? Now, each week, we go to a table and we meet the author of wisdom at the table who in his wisdom said, you know what, in order to save humanity, I have to become human and put on flesh and die on a cross. And we face a choice every day of who we are going to follow. Are we going to follow our own wisdom, uh, looking out for our own needs and our own wants and our own desires, or are we going to submit and as we fear the Lord, we revere and we submit to his will. I think that's the wise thing to do. So today, as we go to the table, maybe there's something you're struggling with that you need, just need to pray, God, give me wisdom in this. Um, maybe it's something you're sitting around a table with some friends this afternoon, and you can share that as well. But as we take the bread and we take the cup, let's be thankful for Jesus. Let's be thankful for God the Father and the spirit that lives within us. And, uh, and let's seek out their wisdom. God, I turn to you. You are my help when I need wisdom. You always see me through. To know that you're chasing after me makes me want to run to where you are. God, you make this journey worth it. I give you all my heart. When I don't know
When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out. I run to you. When I need a solution, I have no doubt that I will run to you. When I don't know what to do, you help me figure it out. God. Hey, thanks again for being with us this morning. I hope that throughout this week we can continue to ask the question, what is the wise thing to do? I want to let you know that this Saturday, August 21st, is a mobile food pantry Saturday. So if you haven't signed up and you want to volunteer, please go to forhermitage.com to sign up. Please start posting it, letting your neighbors and your friends know we'll have free food available at the school starting at 9 a.m. this Saturday. Also, this coming Sunday, August 22nd, is our back to school Sunday, which means we're inviting teachers and staff from the schools to come join us, and it should be a lot of fun. So if we don't see you in person, we'll see you online next week. Have a great week.